Hello and welcome back to the midweek show. We have plenty of stuff coming your way in the next half an hour or so. We'll look at some previous action against Walsall uh, as we've got a game coming up against them on Saturday afternoon here at the Jobs of Community Stadium. We'll also be launching the Goal of the Month campaign for February, so stay tuned to see how you can vote for your favourite goal. But we're starting the show with some previews of the Essex Senior Cup final taking place here at the Jobsurf Community Stadium on Tuesday, 19th of March. So let's hear from Dave Hazzy and Brad Ayonbien. Dave, a big game coming up in the Essex Senior Cup. How's the preparation going for it? Yeah, good. Um, I think it's, it's in the back of everyone's minds at the moment because there's a few games coming up prior to that. Um, but I think the boys are ready and, and as we are as staff, a little bit of a watch of, of Redbridge against Malden. Um, I'm actually going to go and watch them tonight against Enfield and then again against Grays on Saturday. So going to pay them the respect they deserve, um, but, but make sure we're prepared going into the game. Is the preparation any different compared to a, a normal league game perhaps? Mm. Uh, no, not really. Um, <clears throat> I think it's important that, like I said, we show them the respect they deserve for getting to the final and, and do uh, our homework, if you like, on them. It's a team that we haven't played before, so it's something we need to, to make, be mindful of and, and, and make sure we know exactly what their strengths and weaknesses are going into the game. And is it going to be difficult to select a squad for that fixture, given the fact that so many players have performed really well in the tournament over the four yeah. games that we've had? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I think that's a, a real hard one for us because... Obviously, we, depending on, on what first-team players are available, depending on what 21 players are available for injury as well, um, and the 18s that have, have played in that competition have done well for us. And we want to make sure that we have the, the best team we can out on the night. Um, so anyone that's in and around it that's, that's performed, I'd expect, perform well, sorry, I'd, I'd expect to be involved. And I suppose what helps as well is that you'll be playing in front of your supporters at, mm. at the stadium. Does that make a difference at all? Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's helped us. I mean, the last couple have been at home against Buckhurst and against Hashtag. And like I said to you before, in the pre-match going into the, to the Hashtag game, the, the fans have been brilliant. Um, as I said, about the drum and, and making a bit of a racket, making a bit of a noise. And I think that really helps having a bit of an atmosphere, making it a little bit closer to a first-team fixture. And it, it being a final, hopefully there'll be a few more there and we can entertain them like we have done the last couple of rounds. And for you personally, you said before that last year really motivated you to go one step further and, and win the competition. And now it's, it's a great chance for you to, to do just that. Yeah, no, exactly. I th I, last year hurt because I thought we had a good side out and, and being 2 0 up in the semi final, you, you expect to go to the final and we didn't. Um, it, hurt, it hurt us as staff, it definitely hurt the players because we still speak about it now, which is good. It's a real good learning curve. Um, I actually went to the final last year. Um, and, and experienced it and, and was just gutted sitting there looking at it thinking we could have been involved in it. So to be involved in it this year, um, obviously at our stadium against a good Redbridge side, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And what is your message to, to supporters who will be coming on, on Tuesday night hoping that they'll see their team lift a, lift a trophy? Yeah, no, I, just, just first of all, thank you for the last few rounds because you've made it a real good atmosphere for, for the boys to play in and myself to work in. Um, I want more of the same and maybe some, some more fans coming along and, and a bit louder and a more of a racket and uh, let's make it like a home game really because it is at our stadium and uh, I, I think we can do that. Brad, a big game in the Essex Senior Cup upcoming. It's the final at the Jobserve Community Stadium. You must be feeling quite excited ahead of the game. Yeah, I've been excited from when I got in the change room after the semi-final. Um, I think we're all ready for, ready for the game and... As I said before, a final is something everybody wants to play in, so we're ready. And describe that journey to the final. You've played in three out of the four games in the tournament, scoring three goals as well. So it's, it's quite a good personal campaign in the tournament for you as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, really good to get three goals um, to in the last round as well. Uh, could have been three, as, we've all, as we all know, but have to be three and three and... Um, also congratulations to everybody else as well because I've only played three out of the four so to all of us to get all the way here is really good. And there was a few tough games in the tournament you travelled to to places on cold nights like Wolfhamstow so it must show your resilience as well that you're prepared to, to properly dig in and, and get those results uh, on the way to the final. Yeah, yeah, especially back when Wolfhamstow, tough night, freezing, toes are, toes are cold but the resilience from everybody to get through it, not just in the Wolverhampton game, but all the other ones as well, was really good and 
yeah, like I said, we're excited to be here. And as a reward, you'll get to play in the final at the stadium as well, in front of your own fans. Um, how, how does that make you feel? Does it make you more exciting playing at home during the final? Yeah, 100%. I, th I think being at home is always good. Um, on our own turf, it's our, it's our place. Um, so we'll make sure to win the game. And um, do it in front of the fans as well is always great. And in terms of preparation for that match, is it any different compared to your, your normal matches? I, I suppose it is, given the, 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 sort of the, the gravity of the, of the game. Uh, no, no, just keeping it the same. Um, preparing for the game as, as if it were any other game. Um, I think in situations like this, you overthink games, and that's when it might, might be weighing on the mind. So I think you prepare as if you've been there before, and, and the result will come. And then lastly, what's your message to the supporters who, who are planning on attending the, the, the game? Yeah, be ready to celebrate a win. It's great to hear from Dave and Brad. Uh, and Brad incidentally scored in the Essex Senior Cup semi-final against Hashtag, taking the use into the final. And he scored uh, in February, which means he is one of the contenders for February's goal of the month. Here are the four goals upcoming, and make sure you head to Call You Tickets to vote for your favourite. Some good strikes there and uh, do make sure you head to call you tickets to vote for your favorite goal of february and we will announce the winner uh, on saturday's pre-match show now you probably would have seen that it was the international women's day on the 8th of march and as part of the celebrations we spoke to some members of the call you women's team so let's hear what they had to say so millie we're, we're talking about international women's day how relevant is it in the modern day? I think um, International Women's Day is really, really relevant still. It's an amazing opportunity to celebrate the successes of women across all elements of, of life. Um, and whilst we've come so far with uh, women's rights and gender equality, there's still so much more that can be done. Uh, it's an opportunity, I guess, to, 
to connect with other people, reflect on, on where we're at, but also there's, it, it provides an influx of resources and events for schools and young women and people that need inspiring to really access uh, those role models, the things they need to motivate them and, and understand that they have um, the potential to do so much in, in the world. I think it's still really important, um, specifically in an industry like football where it's still so male dominated and male heavy. Um, and it's brilliant that we get a chance to sort of really celebrate and highlight um, you know, strong females in every walk of life, not just football. Um, but yeah, it's still really important in the modern day. It's always an opportunity to, to just celebrate and I think it brings together uh, people from all different uh, cultures and walks of life to, to just highlight how great women are. <laughs> you said the key word there, inspiring. The, the, the theme this year is around inspiring inclusion. Just talk us through some of your role models and, and who inspired you. I think I'm really lucky as a coach right now to have some amazing female coach role models in Casey Stoney, Emma Hayes, Serena Viedman, all achieving amazing successes over the recent seasons with their respective teams. I think I've been really lucky in the sense that from the beginning of my coaching journey when I was sort of 13, 14, um, I was always surrounded by really positive, strong female role models. Um, growing up, playing football um, for Essex County Player Development Centre and the County School Squad, I always had female coaches around me. Um, and you know, one of them is now our chairwoman in Danielle Warns, who was always a brilliant coach that I supported when I was younger. Um, and people like Emma Burden, who I've mentioned before, but really got me into coaching. And I think without those really positive, strong female role models, you know, I might not have carried on that coaching journey and you know still be doing it as a full-time career now so yeah I've been really grateful to have really positive people around me. From a personal perspective I've always been a real fan of people that drive opportunities for others maybe more in the background um, not so much in the background for this individual but Baroness Sue Campbell is a big sort of role model for myself um, she had a fantastic career She's inspired so many people, working from a PE teacher and a netball player up to director of football, women's football at the FA. Um, and I've had the pleasure of listening to her as a keynote speaker on a few times. And the way she talks just makes you want to be a better person and do more for the, the community that you serve. Um, as well as, I think, other role models I like to see are, I guess, more local level role models. The, the volunteers that give up their time parents to just deliver opportunities that maybe weren't there for, for young females across the area and the communities that they, they live in. Well, outside of football my mum's a massive inspiration to me, obviously taking me to, to football games or training. Uh, I don't live that close so it's quite a trek to training but uh, yeah she's been great for the whole way through, kind of my little mentor in the car before and after games. I think my mum and my dad, because they both encourage me to start and they take me to training and matches every week and they just keep me going rather than thinking it's a hard job or they just keep going and encouraging me, so that's my inspiration. Do, do you yourself perhaps feel like a bit of a role model for, for some of the younger, younger girls trying to get into the game? Um, I hope so, I think that's a really nice thought. Um, I'd like to think that I could be a role model to some of those younger players coming through. Um, I know that I've got a really good relationship with a lot of the girls I coach. Um, I'm involved with all the age groups from 10s up to 16s, including the college girls, um, 16s to 19s as well. Um, and yeah, I think I pride myself on the relationship I build with every single player I coach. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice thought of myself being a role model to them. Um, in terms of working within the team, I'm really lucky that we have such amazing players to work with. They, they make the job easy in so many ways. They've, they've come together overnight the last nine months and been very successful um, as a group of players. However, they also sort of inspire me. Um, it goes both ways. They're, they're my role models too. They're the ones that are there listening, challenging me to be better and to develop as a coach to ensure that they have the, the development opportunities. It's been a really good first season for you as part of the women's team. Uh, champions elect through to the quarterfinals of the League Cup. Um, what, what's it been like playing for the team? 
It's been so exciting. I think that most people will, will agree that we didn't sort of expect um, this sort of road through the league that we've had, but the team gelled so much quicker than expected, which is always a positive. Um, we're so lucky that we've got a real good culture around the team. It's a really positive environment um, and everybody's looking for the same goal um, to sort of progress through the leagues and, you know, everything seems to be really falling into place. Um, especially when we're, you know, flying through the, the cup as well. You know, we've faced some really challenging opponents, um, a lot of Prem Division teams that have given us good games, um, made us work really, really hard. But to come out of those games on top, it's a really positive and good feeling. Um, so yeah, everything seems to be falling into place and everyone's working really hard. The step up from girls to women's is really exciting and like the new challenges, the new people you play with is really exciting, yeah. We've made like a massive improvement from the start. Uh, we've all bonded together as a team really well um, and yeah, the season's going really well. I couldn't have really asked for more in the first season with the team or as a team at all. They have been really successful um, and, and to kind of see the joy and the successes come um, it's a really proud moment to be to be a part of something bigger. You see more and more sort of spectators coming down to watch local girls teams getting behind the, the team and supporting people interested in engaging with the, the team through school visits and other opportunities and it really shows the power that such a big club and, and, and women's football can have when they work together. It's really special to play for such a big well-known club. Obviously, have been playing for the club and the community foundation for quite a while now. Um, got scouted when I was 12 at a school tournament and that was like amazing news for me to be like, yeah, kind of scouted for this big, well-known club and, uh, and seeing how it's grown since has been amazing. Women's football in general is probably in the best position it's, it's ever been, um, but there is still so much more that can be done to help it. Yeah, definitely. I think that it's on the up and it's, you know, the, the progression that it's had over the past sort of five years has been absolutely huge. Um, we've spoken before about the fact that the Euros was definitely a catalyst to that sort of progression and the upward trajectory of that. Um, and it, you know, really set it going forward in England especially. Um, but even since, you know, sort of one of my highlights of women's football was the uh, World Cup in Canada back in 2015. And when you look how different it is from then to now, the difference is huge. Um, it's almost quite impossible to believe. Um, uh, even things like a few of our under 10s have the um, new sticker books, the Panini sticker books for the WSL. And we sort of exchange swapsies before training starts on a Monday and different things like that, which is nice. But I think there is still a lot of work to go, um, but it's definitely on the right track. The growth that we've seen over the last, last few years really is a testament to the volunteers and the people within the game already. But it shows how far you can come in such a short period of time. And that growth has to be then backed up by long-term and sustainable change to ensure that progression continues and you don't get a huge gap between the best and the rest almost. And it'd be amazing to see a lot more clubs with women's teams building on those, those previous growth and successes to develop pathways where opportunities to perform at higher levels are more readily available and that only comes from backing and support. Um, so having a women's team at Colchester United for the first time in a while is a huge step on that way. Um, but there's always more that can be done. It never, it never will stop. It's great to hear from the team there. And do make sure you go on the website to check when their next game is taking place and go and support them. Now, we're going back all the way to April 2021 when the youth faced Walsall here at the Jobserve Community Stadium. Two goals coming from Ryan Clampin and Michael Felivi. So let's remind ourselves what happened on that afternoon.
a vital three points back in 2021 in our fight for survival. Uh, let's hope for a similar similar result come this Saturday. Uh, tickets for The Clash are available on Call Your Tickets. Make sure you uh, get yours. Uh, tickets for the Essex Senior Cup final against Redbridge are also available, uh, so make sure you get them as well. Uh, that's about it for this uh, week's midweek show. We'll see you for the pre-match show ahead of the Walsall game. Until then, have a good week. We'll see you then.